Welcome to the Journey Journal with me, Oscar Camejo. Of course, as many of you all know, if you've been following me for any length of time, you'll know that the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast is the main podcast. As you probably have seen, the Journey Journal actually is a spinoff of that main podcast. So the Journey Journal is published on Mondays while the main episodes of the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle podcast is published on Wednesday. So you can look forward to two episodes a week. Now, for those of you who may be new to this and new to my podcast, you may be wondering, like, what is the Journey Journal? Well, basically, the Journey Journal, it's a journal of my journey. You know, I found out literally not too long after I started my journey, the importance of tracking my progress. So from day one of me getting into the gym and eating right, I can tell you not only my weight, but what my exercise routine was on day one, all the way up until now. Because looking back, even looking at pictures, I can show my progress. And, you know, it's something about seeing progress over time and being able to look back. It's been really a blessing to be able to share people uh, my story of where I was when I was 268 pounds and diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and told by the doctor that, hey, you need to change your life, man, or you're at risk of heart failure and other chronic diseases. So folks, I decided to turn my life around. The whole purpose of the Journey Journal, again, is to kind of share with you some practical tips of what I do on a day-to-day basis and to help you develop a lifestyle of transformation so that you too can reverse type 2 diabetes. So The whole purpose of not just the Journey Journal, but also the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle podcast is simply this, to help diabetics make lifestyle changes to reverse type 2 diabetes. And so who is this podcast for? It's very simple. It's for diabetics who are overweight, have unhealthy nutritional habits, and are in need of guidance for transforming their lives in order to reverse type 2 diabetes. Listen, you and I both know that there are family members, friends, or even even yourself, you may be struggling with type 2 diabetes. And you, you, you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I turn this thing around? Can I even turn it around? What can I do to live a better life? Because, you know, folks, I've been there. So I'm coming from the perspective of someone who's been where you are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Maybe you're scared. Maybe you're wondering like, man, is this the the end of the road? Well, I'm here to tell you that it is not the end of the road. Today actually is the beginning. It is the first day of the rest of your life. So be encouraged. And that's what this whole podcast is about, is to provide encouragement, inspiration, and motivation to help you fulfill your goals. Because listen, weight loss is very important. It is key to living a healthy lifestyle because you know what, whether you have type two diabetes or not, we are a, especially in the United States, actually all over the world, people are uh, becoming heavier and heavier because of the things that we eat. So there's a way for us to transform our lives, folks. We can do it. It's just a matter of us making the decisions to turn our life around. So as we continue, I want you to keep that in mind that no matter where you are in your journey, you can turn things around. So last week I shared, you know, uh, quite a few things about bad habits and what happens when your routine literally gets thrown off. You know, maybe you've made a decision to uh, live healthy and turn your life around and then life happens and your routine gets thrown off. You know, so I really encourage you to, to listen to episode five of the Journey Journal. I published that last week. So go ahead and uh, make sure you take a look and and listen to that episode. I mean, that episode really kind of set the foundation for where we're going. This week, we're going to really get into some good stuff. So I was thinking, you know, the summer is here and a lot of folks are going to be going on vacation. And you know how it is sometimes on vacation, 
for most of us, you know, we develop bad habits or we continue our bad habits. In fact, it probably even gets worse. Think about it. You know, there's the vacations, you're going to be traveling, there's the family cookouts, there's all kind of things that happen during the summer. And for a lot of people, you know, they say that they're, they've been working on their quote unquote beach bodies. You know, they started the, the year off real strong in January, like, hey, I'm going to get my body ready. It's a new year. It's a new me. <laughs> you know, we've all been there. We've all <laughs> kind of said that this is a new year. We're going to really transform our bodies. And at some point, you know, some people fall off. Some people don't. They keep it going and they see results. And for those of you who may have fallen off, hey, you know, it happens. That's uh, it, it happens, you know, and a lot of times it happens because we didn't have a plan that we can actually stick to or we started something that was just very, very complicated and it just made things worse. So yeah, here you are now and it's the summer and what's going to happen during the summer, you know, Here's some summertime bad habits that a lot of us, we we carry over and we really don't realize that, you know what? Hey, I need to really get my stuff together and get myself together. So what happens during the summer? Yeah, I mentioned about traveling. You know, you go through the airports, you go on vacation, you're going to go see your family, you're going to go on these cruise ships. And what happens? You know, your eating of fast food increases because, hey, you're not cooking. You eat more processed food. We eat more fried foods. Now, that's a big thing for people. It could be fish, you know, chicken and other stuff. Just eating a lot of fried food, a lot of potatoes. Um, You go to these hotels and resorts and they have all this breakfast food out you know, your bacon and your ham and turkey sausage, chicken sausage, pork sausage. Oh my gosh, they have it all laid out, all pretty. (laughs) And you're like, oh, I have this whole buffet of breakfast. Oh, and all-inclusive resorts in Jamaica and the Bahamas and the Caicos Islands and Greek islands, you know where y'all go. (laughs) You know, you may go into the mountains and they have this breakfast just laid out and it's just so beautiful. They have all these pastries and you're like, hey, I paid for all this. I'm going to eat. I'm just going to enjoy myself. (laughs) You know, so you get the muffins and you already know, hey, you know, I'm on vacation. I'm going to take a break. And (laughs) you just eat, man. Oh, and for those of you all who like to sleep in, oh my gosh, <laughs> you're probably trying to get more sleep than you had before, but then you you sleep so much <laughs> that you're still tired and you don't get out and walk and exercise and stuff like that. But yeah, so on vacation, I know how it is. Oh, and if you're into steak, oh my gosh, you go to these restaurants and these all-inclusive places And they just have a whole bunch of red meat, steak and ribeye steak. You got your filet mignon. Oh, and don't let me get on the crab legs, folks. (laughs) Your crab leg folks out there, raise your hand. I know you're probably thinking about crab legs right now. I get it. It's the summer, man. You want to let your hair down. You want to enjoy. You want to have a good time. (laughs) And the last thing that's on your mind is weight loss and eating right. Because, hey, it's the summer. We're supposed to have a good time. We're supposed to eat good. And unfortunately, a lot of us, how we grew up, eating good means eating a lot, not necessarily eating healthy and nutritious food. So, and, and let's say you don't go on vacation, but, you know, you have some time off and, you know, Y'all have your weekly and daily cookouts. You cook out more. So you're in your backyard or you go to your neighbor's house or your family member's house. And guess what's laid out? A whole bunch of processed food. The hot dogs, the sausages, the kielbasa, 
the pork ribs, the beef ribs, just a whole bunch of stuff. And guess what you do? You stuff yourself. We all do it. You know, it's nothing to feel bad about. It's life. It's the habits that we formulated. So this week, I'm actually going to kick off a new series for the whole summer. So from June to about July, I'm starting a series called Summer Bites. So Summer Bites is basically this, developing healthy lifestyle habits while on vacation. Yeah, summer vacation. So you definitely want to listen throughout the summer and really tune in because we're going to go over some practical things when it comes to developing habits and even breaking those bad habits so we can develop good habits. You know, we're going to talk about eating. We're going to talk about exercise and some other stuff. Because listen, hey, it's the summertime. You're trying to let your hair down and you want to have a good time. But you know what? I want to keep it at the forefront of your thinking that you're on this weight loss journey. We don't want to give up and cave in and quit on these plans that we're putting in place. So the summer bites, you definitely want to stay tuned for that. Folks, if you want to connect with me, you can always email me at hello at beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com. Also on Instagram at beatingdiabeteslifestyle. Listen, if you want to send me a video with a question or a comment, you can also use the HiHo app. That's H-I-H-O. This is a great new way to literally connect with me and share a question by recording a video. I think that's a great way for us to connect as well. Now, let's get back to this week's episode. If you all didn't know, I actually have a TikTok channel and or page or profile, whatever y'all want to call it. And so I post videos probably like three, four times a week, probably more than that, sometimes twice a day. But I get comments and likes and shares and and I really appreciate my TikTok followers and and so forth. So a follower actually wrote in in response to a video that I posted recently. And it was about, you know, setbacks and and really just making a decision to start your journey. And this is what Simone wrote. And I love this and I wanted to share it with you all. She wrote, a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. Wow, think about that. That's real simple. A journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. Well, first of all, thank you, Simone. I really appreciate you commenting and sharing that because you know what? It's so true. When we begin this journey of weight loss to transform our lives, it begins with the first step. It's going to be a long journey. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough at times. But we have to take that first step. And for those of you all who have just started following me, whether it's on TikTok or listening to the podcast, you know, I really appreciate you all taking this step to impact your life and to make a difference in your life. Because, hey, you know what? We're all on this journey together. And by taking this first step, we can take another step. And before you know it, we're achieving the results that we're looking for. I knew that habits were going to play a major role in our decision making. You know, we already have certain habits, good and bad. And unfortunately, when it comes to eating, many of us have bad habits and it's nothing to beat yourself up over, but it's something to it's something about really facing the truth about how we live and our decision making. Because you know what? I've heard it said that life is a sum total of the decisions that we make. So every day we make a decision, we make choices. So where you are today is a result of the choices that you've made. Plain and simple. It's nothing to beat yourself up over. You may not be feeling uh, so good about yourself when it comes to your weight and, and just your appearance. Listen, yeah, facing the mirror may be tough, but it's important. You have to face the person in the mirror. 
You have to face the reality of where you are. It's like going to the mall. If you're trying to get to a certain store, you have to look at that map. No matter what entrance you walked in, you made a decision to walk through that entrance. So once you found the map at whatever entrance you are, what do you normally see on the map? The little red dot says you are here. So you look all around, you say, okay, I'm trying to get to this store or that store, or maybe to this, to the food court, wherever you're trying to go to, you have to identify where you are in order to know where you're going. That goes back to that comment that Simone uh, wrote in and said, that journey of a thousand miles starts with that first step. So that first step is knowing where you are. Looking in the mirror is knowing where you are. Seeing your weight, okay, this is where I am. Me, I had to do it. Even though I didn't like what I saw in the mirror, I realized, hey, I was 268 pounds. I didn't like that I had love handles. I didn't like that I had this gut. But my doctor was like, hey, you got to get that weight off of you. Your weight is contributing to your insulin resistance and you having type 2 diabetes, your cravings. So you got to do something about it. My doctor couldn't do it for me. He helped me to see where I was. So that red dot on the map, hey, you are here. We're, we need to get you over there. He didn't give me the road map. He kind of gave me some guidance, but I had to go and do the work and research and find out for myself. So where are you in terms of your habits, specifically when it comes to eating? Because listen, it's the summer. And we're about to go on these vacations. You're probably already on vacation by the time you're listening to this. And there's, you know, a reality check. I don't know the last time you got on the scale, but you got to know where you are to know where you're going. When I was 268 pounds, people, I had to face the fact that, hey, I am here. I'm standing on this scale. I don't like what I look like. I don't like that my face has swollen up. I don't know exactly how I got here, but I know I got here. Well, I knew how I got there. It was the eating and lack of exercise and just living a, a lifestyle that was not conducive to where I needed to be. So hold your head up. Look at yourself in the mirror. Face the reality of where you are, folks. Because listen. I hear folks say, yeah, moderation, just just enjoy yourself. Just eat whatever you want. Just, you know, just do it in moderation. <laughs> I have my own soapbox when it comes to moderation and how people interpret that and they take it the wrong way. And, you know, like I said, I have my own. <laughs> I'm probably going to do a whole episode on that at some point. I've been talking about it for a minute. But in any case, when it comes to habits. Right. You may already know. Yeah, Oscar, I know I, I eat fried foods all the time. I don't have to go on vacation to <laughs> to realize that I, I eat processed foods all the time. You know, the sliced turkey and the the sausage meat and, and all that other stuff. I eat it on a regular basis. I eat fast food every day. Hey, trust me, folks, I've been there. That was me. I used to eat fast food three times a day, breakfast, lunch and dinner. And sometimes a snack in between, fast food every day, wasting money. And it contributed to my poor health. As of today, though, I lost over 80 something pounds and I work out regularly. When I say regularly, I'm probably in the gym five, six days a week. If I'm not in the gym on the weekends, I'm out hiking. I do uh, trail running. And quite a other few things that I do, but I like to exercise now. It's a part of my lifestyle, but it wasn't always like that. So here's a couple of things I want you to keep in mind. You know, you have to understand habits. What are they? You have to make better choices and you have to repeat the good habits. You eliminate the bad habits or reduce the bad habits and make better choices when it comes to good habits and developing good habits. So understanding habits, 
you know, what is a habit anyway? You know, sometimes we have an idea of what a habit is, but what is an, an, a, a habit? What is a habit? Not just based on what we think it is, but let's broaden our understanding of what a habit is. A habit is simply a routine or practice that we perform regularly. Again, it's a routine or practice, something we do or perform on a regular basis. It's an automatic response to a specific situation. It's something we do automatically. It's like a knee jerk reaction. Okay. uh, Let's say at night, I know for me, it was a habit for me to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich before I went to bed. And I did that. If it wasn't a whole peanut butter and jelly sandwich, it was taking a scoop of peanut butter, three scoops maybe, until I just didn't want any more. And yeah, we'll go and head straight to bed. That was a, a habit of mine. And it led to my weight gain. Or let's say I had a, a habit of going to this local fast food place in the morning and getting a, a croissant or bagel with bacon, egg, and cheese every morning. That was my habit. I had a habit of drinking soda every day with, if not a Coke with lunch, it was like a sweet tea or a sweet tea mixed with lemonade or just straight lemonade full of a whole bunch of sugar. That was my Habit. That was my routine every day. I did it on a regular basis. It was automatic. And so when it comes to habits, I want us to really look at, okay, what are some things that we're doing on a regular basis? What are some things that you're doing on a regular basis that you know is a bad habit that you know is is contributing or maybe you're not fully sure if it's contributing to your poor health. We got to identify those things. And then we have to make better choices. You see on vacation, you know, I talked about when you go to the airport or you're going to be on the cruise ship, you're going to be at the hotels, you're going to be presented with all kinds of food choices. And unfortunately, a lot of those food choices is one bad choice after the other. So it's like you have uh, three not so good options before you, let's say, let's say it's at breakfast, but you know, you have a whole menu and you decide, okay, well, hey, I'm just gonna eat what I normally eat. You know, the bacon, the pork bacon, um, fried, You may get your potatoes, your roasted potatoes in the morning for breakfast with eggs and you throw a whole bunch of salt and pepper on it and uh, whatever else you put on your eggs. And, And on top of that, you may get a slice of ham. You know, you may like your pancakes and your French toast. And hey, I know it. The struggle is real, folks. But when you when you're presented with those options, I want you now that you're on this journey to lose weight, you have the menu before you. And again, I'm not trying to spoil your vacation. I just want you to make this summer different. I want this summer to be the opportunity that you take to really form new and better habits. So if you're at a restaurant and Or let's say if you do go to a fast food spot, usually, and in some cases, you have fried foods and you have baked or grilled options. Let's say you like eating chicken sandwiches. A lot of the crispy chicken sandwiches that we get, they may taste good. They may be popular. But the fried foods, they're not good for us, folks. And then you get French fries on top of that. So you're eating fried chicken, French fries, and you may get a biscuit. And then on top of that, you get a, a, a soft drink, a soda that's full of sugar. So already from the first bite to the second thing you eat to the third thing you, you put in your body is just something that's that's not good for you. So instead of the fried options, I want you to start thinking about getting grilled or baked. You're still eating the chicken, 
you know, but choose a better option. I had to do that myself. And you may say, okay, well, Oscar, okay, yeah, well, I don't eat chicken sandwiches, but I like salads. You know, hey, you may be a salad eater. Hey, I get it. There's a a fast food place that I go to that um, I don't go to it as often as I used to, but I was getting a salad from there, you know, when I started my journey. And I was like, okay, yeah, you know what? Uh, I'm going to stop getting the fried chicken, the cut up chicken that's on it, get that grilled instead. And that was a step. And then I started learning about salad dressings and I'm like, whoa, this salad dressing is, you know, I used to get honey mustard salad dressing and then realize that, hey, that honey that's in it, that's not real honey. That's artificial sweeteners and they sweeten it up. And I'm like, oh, OK, so I need to cut back on my sugar intake, even with my salad dressings. So I started getting vinaigrettes. You know, then they have the regular vinaigrettes and the light vinaigrettes. But then you realize, hey, those still have sugars in it. But you're scaling back little by little. So you get my point. Choose better options. Now, let's say when it comes to the stuff you drink. Now, listen, I don't drink alcohol. It's not a thing for me. Never been an alcohol drinker. I probably had like one beer in my whole life. And that was just to taste it. (laughs) My dad, you know, he used to have like Heineken's, you know, (laughs) in the refrigerator. I came home one day and I was like, hmm, dad's not here. So let me try one of this. Cause you know, it was like a, a man thing, (laughs) I guess, you know? So I tasted it and I was like, "Hmm, okay, it ain't for me. And that was it. So For those of you all who may love alcohol, it may not be beer, it may be wine, or it may be some other form of spirits, as they say. (laughs) You really need to reconsider that, your alcohol intake. So I'm not going to go too much in depth in that, but I want you to make better options or choose better options when it comes to what you put in your body in terms of your beverages. There's going to be cookouts and people are going to be popping bottles and (laughs) popping cans and you don't want to seem like the eyeball. So you crack one open and tastes good. I guess you may be used to it, but, you know, at the end of the day, I just want you to think about this. Anything that's liquid goes into your bloodstream quicker than food. So whether it's alcohol or soda. The sugar content, all that stuff is going to create a sugar spike, a glucose spike, and it's not going to be good for you, especially if you are suffering with or dealing with type 2 diabetes. So you want to really keep that under control, not even under control. I really want you to eliminate all fruit juices, sodas and alcohol and go cold turkey and just drink water and that's it. (laughs) I know it's kind of radical for some folks, but, you know. Just think about it. So one of the things that I had to do, I literally cut out sodas, folks, because I'm like, hey, this is not good for my body. It's not. It's like pouring acid in your body. (laughs) I know it's kind of like graphic, but in any case, so you just really need to make some better choices when it comes to your beverages. And as we go through the summer and with the Summer Bites series, you know, I go more in depth, but I really want you to think about your choices and making better choices. Here's another choice, you know, walking versus not walking, you know, exercising versus not exercising. What are you going to do when you're on vacation? You just ate a whole big plate of ribs and mashed potatoes, baked beans and corn on the cob and chicken wings and (laughs) what are you going to do? You're full. If you were like me back in the day, you sat on the couch or you kicked back on the lawn chair or you're on the deck of that cruise ship and you just relaxed because, hey, you know what? I just had a really good meal. (laughs) And you just kick back and you're just enjoying the sun all the while. Your body is trying to process all that food 
So this is one recommendation that I tell people instead of just sitting down and watching TV or relaxing right after you eat, actually take a 10 minute walk. So as your body is processing the food, you're, you know, you probably already are going to be experiencing a, uh, a sugar rush, depending on what you put in your body. You're going to have a sugar spike, your body's, you know, processing all that food. So rather than just sitting down and be sedentary or sitting and watching TV or playing video games, for those of you who are into video games, get up and walk for 10 minutes. Do something different. Get your body moving. Help your metabolism out. Okay. So repeating good habits. Okay. As you're eliminating bad habits and you're repeating and you're formulating good habits, I want you to hit the repeat button. So now when it comes to making small changes, make small changes that you can repeat. Because once you put your life on repeat or you put those good habits on repeat, you will eventually see results. And it's going to take time. You know, I know sometimes when, let's say you start going to the gym today, you automatically look in the, the mirror and you're like, okay, I don't see any results. Do I need to keep this going? Listen, it's not the thing that you do once that will make a big difference. It's the thing that you do on a consistent and repeated basis that will yield to results. That's just a natural fact. Many of us, you know, when we were younger, we may have been thin or maybe not as heavy as we are now. Right. But over time, we developed certain habits that led to our growth, our physical growth in terms of weight. And I'm specifically talking about unhealthy weight, you know, from college all the way up to where we are now in some cases. So, you know, you kind of get busy with life and you, you build this this habit of eating. And then before you know her, you're like, man, how did I become 250 pounds? How, you know, did this happen? Well, it happened over time. So it's the same thing. Now we have to go in reverse, put in place small changes that you can repeat. You put those things on repeat. And before you know it, you are going to see results. It's not the immediate microwave changes that's going to make a difference. So consistency is the key to breakthrough is what I've heard. Consistency is the key to breakthrough. So now here's some recommendations to help you to stay on track, especially when you're out on vacation. And this is regardless if you're on vacation or not, this is just something that, you know, it, it's really, um, Vital, I would say, is even critical for you to develop in your life and and have it be consistent in your life. And I shared a lot of this um, previously. And for those of you who may be first time listeners, I think this is going to be something that really is beneficial to you and worth sharing with you as well. So keep your mind focused on your goals. That's number one. Number two, plan ahead. Number three, set boundaries. And number four, very important, don't skip the routine, adjust instead. So a lot of times what I do is I, I'll listen to podcasts uh, on health and fitness. I'll read audio books or read books or listen to audio books. Um, I read articles just on the subject because I want to keep my mind thinking about health and fitness and reversing type 2 diabetes. Right. Because I don't want to waste time watching TV and following the new series that just came out that, wow, it's so good. And before you know, it, you're binge watching. And while you're binge watching, you're eating all these snacks and unhealthy foods. And before you realize it, two, three, four, five, six hours have gone by and you've wasted that time and you've not really been productive. So keep your mind focused on your goals, planning ahead. Now, when you're going on vacation and you're going, uh, you're traveling, or even if you're staying locally, you may do a staycation. You know, it's important to plan ahead. 
Now, what does that actually look like for those of you who are going to be traveling? I would say, you know, do some research about the hotels, the cities you're going into, even the the airports, your cruise ships. Know what you're going to get into. What what are you going to face when you go down to Orlando with your kids? <laughs> or you go to Jamaica and Aruba, you know? I mean, what 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 food options are there? You want to know, okay, hey, I want to know my my options. I want to know, look at menus and you may be like, oh man, that's a lot of work. I just want to enjoy myself. I want to let my hair down. I get it. Hey, it's your life. It's your choice. You do what you want with it. I'm just giving you some tips and things that I recommend that you do, you know, just plan ahead. So at least, you know, okay, when that menu is in front of you, you know, okay, hey, I've already scoped it out. I know that, okay, I'm going to you know, this, the kids are going to have this and, you know, I'm going to have this and this is what they have. And, you know, don't just walk in cold to a restaurant and not know what's on the menu ahead of time. You know, sometimes we set ourselves up for failure because we don't plan ahead. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Let's say you, you're going to have a barbecue at your house. You're going to have a cookout and, One thing I don't want you to do is every day eat fried foods. Don't eat processed foods every day. Scale back, folks. What is it going to hurt you if you choose a better option? And that option may be, hey, instead of us eating out every day on vacation, maybe there's a way that you can, you know, prepare some salads, go to the local Whole Foods store, or your local grocery store in that city or somewhere and just say, okay, you know what? Hey, at least a couple of days out of the week, we as a family, we're going to eat some salad, you know, for lunch instead of eating fried foods. You got to plan ahead. I know it's going to take some work, but you know, your, your health is really important, folks. It's really important. So you got to think about that. You got to make a conscious decision that, you know what? Hey, we're going to do something different. Now, planning ahead for you may be different for some folks, but the point of all this is plan for success. Don't wait for it. Number three, I need you to set some boundaries. What does that look like? Okay, you already know. Okay, we're about to go on vacation. Oscar said, hey, we're in the Summer Bite series. So. I need to set some boundaries. Okay, folks, on vacation, we are not going to be drinking soda. We are going to drink more water, even on vacation. Set some boundaries. And those boundaries have to be firm. Or, hey, we're not going to eat fried foods. Hey, Oscar said don't eat fried foods, so we're not going to eat fried food. You know, I mean, sometimes it takes those drastic changes that we can repeat. You're going to be going on vacation for two weeks. Are you really going to be drinking soda every day for two weeks? Think about that. Set some boundaries. And sometimes in those boundaries, you have to say no. I've heard that success is the ability to say no to a thousand things. So every day on vacation for the two weeks that you're gone or the one week or even that one weekend, are you really going to eat waffles? and pork sausage every morning? Do you really want to do that? Do you think that's going to be a good idea? You're trying to lose weight. You're trying to live a healthy lifestyle. You know, for those of you who are not traveling, hey, it's still the summer. What are you going to do? You're at home. It's still going to be regular for you. But what are you going to do this summer that's different? I want you to set some boundaries. Your boundaries are like your guardrails. Okay, hey, I'm not going to go beyond this point. You know, to the left or the right, I have my boundaries. I'm going to scale back, not just scale back and do stuff in quote unquote moderation, (laughs) but I'm going to cut these things out. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm going to add these new things in my life. Number four, as you develop a, a routine, don't skip your routine, folks. Instead, I want you to make adjustments. Summer vacation by itself may is going to be throw is going to throw off your whole routine right it's not what you do day to day you don't go on vacation every day well some of you may <laughs> but i mean whole the whole summer may be a break in your whole routine so 
That doesn't mean skip your routine. That doesn't mean skip eating properly. Instead, make adjustments. So the last two weeks for me were, you know, really an opportunity for me to put in practice what I'm telling you. Because when you talk about routine being thrown off because of job and schedule, we had different events going on that we had to prepare for and be there for. So my whole routine, my normal routine was thrown off. But I made adjustments for it. I planned ahead. I knew, OK, you know, there's going to be events happening throughout the day and the evening. And the, the temptation is to go and just go to a restaurant and just eat food. But no. I meal prepped. I changed the times that I would work out, you know, go out, go early, early in the morning before heading into work or making adjustments in the afternoon, but getting my workout in. Or if I knew that, hey, this one day was going to be jam packed and I wouldn't be able to, to work out. I knew, OK, the, the, the day before or th- maybe that same night once I got home, hey, I'm going to do some type of physical exercise to get my body moving. So we don't skip our routines. We plan ahead. So that may include for you shifting again, your workout times, your meal preps and other things. So when you go on vacation, again, is not the time to slack up folks. That is the perfect time for you to develop good habits. All right, folks, so here are my final thoughts. Listen, wherever you are on your health journey, I want you to start. A lot of times we put things off. We say, okay, well, we're going to wait till this particular day or we're going to wait till this circumstance, you know, gets better. And then I'll start, you know, uh, on my workout regimen, or I have this going on and I already know that, Hey, you know, we're going to have a cookout and I'll work on this after that. But guess what? Those times, you know, come and go. And before we look, before we know it, you know, we haven't even started. So what I want you to do is start. It, It doesn't matter what it is, folks. I want you to start and start now. Right where you are, even if it's taking out a pen and paper, a napkin and a pen or a pencil and write down, OK, I'm going to start. And what is it that you're going to start? What good habit are you going to start? You know, I don't care what it is. You've done all this planning for the summer. Why not plan to start and make it a concrete decision? Don't set aside your health plans just because it's the summer, folks. I, 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 I won't stop saying that. Don't set it aside. Don't set your goals aside. Instead, prepare, lean into it, start. Don't put it off. You've been putting things off. You've been putting your health and wellness off for too long. You can't keep doing that. Stop it. Stop that, but start doing the good. You know what I mean? Start doing the good, folks. Listen, I get it. I know what it feels like day in and day out. Do I start this or not? You know, go ahead and start. Stop playing around. Go ahead and start. Start today. Plan today. Don't put it off. Don't wait for, oh, okay, well, I'm going to wait for the first of the month when This is this. No, you can start formulating your plan today. Start changing your thinking and your relationship with food today. So I'm going to go in more in depth with the Summer Bite series and some other practical things. So I definitely want you to follow, especially to the Journey Journal that comes out every Monday. Remember I told you? So that's it, folks. So I'm going to leave you with this. It's my personal model that I share every time I do a podcast or our film TikToks or whatnot. Stay focused. Keep moving. Never go back. Trust God, you got this. I believe in you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Beating Diabetes podcast with Oscar Camejo. We hope you enjoyed this episode. As a reminder, this podcast is intended for motivational and educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional care by a physician 
or other healthcare professional or qualified fitness instructor. This podcast is provided on the understanding that it does not constitute medical or professional advice or services. If you're looking for help on your journey, seek a qualified medical practitioner. It's important that you utilize someone who is a trained, licensed healthcare professional who can help you on your journey toward good health.